Hi, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, AKA The Rig Doctor. And today I'm gonna to take you through the essential pedals that I feel like you're gonna need as a beginner or intermediate guitar player that's putting together your first pedal board. In my recommendations today, I'm gonna to speak generally about the types of effects because there's more than one type of effect that will do the things that I'm going to talk to you about today. For example, if I talk about a wah pedal, it doesn't mean that you need to get the exact wah pedal that I have, but we're sort of talking about these as overarching categories that you wanna to try to fulfill when thinking about the pedals that you want to start to assemble in order to get a pedal board that does all the general things that you would need it to do and presumably would be able to get you through a gig if you're starting to play with the band or you're just starting to play on your own and you wanna start experimenting with different types of tones. So let's start at the beginning of the chain. Arguably one of the most cliche pedals you'll ever hear on a record that's easily overused is the wah wah pedal. However, it can sound absolutely glorious and it's one of those effects as a beginner or intermediate guitar player, as soon as you step on this, it feels like you just kicked your solo into another gear because it's giving you that filtering, it's giving you some of those really classical tones that we've really recognized in rock music all the way back to Jimi Hendrix and Wah Wah Watson. It's great to be able to just step on a device like this and be able to have some additional inspiration. Now, the key is to kind of edit yourself and make sure that you're kind of pulling back and not overusing this effect but certainly as a beginner, it's a pedal that you're always going to need in one context or another, especially if you're gigging, because invariably a wah pedal has been on almost any major recording, top 100 songs you've heard. It's certainly going to be in at least 20% of them at some point, whether that's as a rhythm piece, whether that's as a solo piece. This is something that you're going to need to have that I think is an essential for any player that's going to be getting into pedals, you want to have a wah wah on your rig. Now on my rig today, I have a blubber wah, which was made by Maxon, that's a Japanese sort of clone of an old Vox style wah. But really there's so many great wahs out there today that you really can't go wrong. Even with the budget friendly stuff like the Dunlop Crybabies, they're still excellent wahs, very reliable. And there's also really high end wahs that maybe don't resemble the exact shape of the enclosure of the classic Crybaby or Voxes, but are extremely well built. Things like the Full Tone Clyde are probably the best made wahs, not only sonically, but also mechanically. And I'll put a list of several wahs that I think you might like at a couple different price points in the description, so you can check those out if you're interested in getting a wah pedal, but not sure which one is gonna be best for your budget. But let's hear how this wah wah might sound in the context of my rig. <laughs> The next pedal in my group of essentials is an overdrive. And I think the classic overdrive that we all know and love, that we've probably heard on countless recordings, whether we acknowledge it or not, is some version of a Tube Screamer. Now on the rig I have here today, I have an Ibanez TS-808. But really just as easily, you could go with a TS-9 or any variation of the Tube Screamer kind of classic pedals. They're all gonna really be roughly in the same territory. Even the $99 TS-9 reissue is gonna be a great version of a Tube Screamer. It's gonna get you in the zone and it's certainly gonna be something that's gonna be workable with a lot of different instruments and a lot of different amplifiers. Whether it's Stevie Ray Vaughan, whether it's John Mayer, or whether it's any of the 1980s or 90s classic rock recordings, there's invariably a Tube Screamer on every single one of those records. So it's definitely something that I highly recommend if you're getting into pedals, you need to have some sort of Tube Screamer. Now, if you don't want to go with a Tube Screamer or you've heard that you wouldn't like a Tube Screamer based on other people that know you, you could, of course, substitute other overdrives in here. But I think that this is going to be something that no matter what your rig is, if you're going to be needing to cover a lot of ground and you're not playing your own music, you might need to cover other types of music. This is certainly a very versatile overdrive, especially with single coil guitars like what I have here with my Tom Anderson, or if you're going to any sort of scooped amplifier like a typical Fender style amp, these are gonna be a godsend and are really gonna work great with those pairings of either that amplifier or this type of guitar that tends to have a little bit more of a scoop sound. The Tube Screamer is kind of the great equalizer and kind of brings everything to the table that these instruments and amplifiers lack and makes everything to sound bigger, fatter, warmer, and really kind of does what it says. It makes it sound like a cranked up tube amp. It's a real Tube Screamer. And so this is another one that I highly recommend. If you're getting into pedals, you absolutely need to have 
some type of mid-range boosted overdrive, whether it's a tube screamer or whether it's something else, it's really helpful to have. The next thing that's an absolute essential with any rig, I think is gonna be a digital delay of some kind. Now, the reason why I'm saying digital delay is with most of the digital delays that are out there, even the more budget-friendly ones, you can definitely voice them to sound more like an analog delay, and you don't have to go and get separate delay units for your analog and your digital. Now, analog units can be great, but there is some lack in their flexibility. A lot of analog delays, especially the vintage style ones, you can't usually put those in an effects loop. They're typically not compatible with anything except for instrument level. They often can sound really dark, and that's not always conducive to being able to have the most dialable and flexible delay tone. So for that reason, just like I have on my board here, I have a Boss DD3. It's about the most common digital delay that's out there, very easy to use, doesn't have too many controls, and it's really gonna give you a great tone right out of the box. These also tend to work okay in most effects loops, which is a great thing if you have an amplifier that utilizes an effects loop. There's not gonna be any shortcoming of the delay, irrespective of where you use it, again, whether that's in the effects loop or in front of the amp has up to 800 milliseconds of delay time, and if you can't find a DD3, Boss has made several different incarnations of this with the DD6, DD7, etc. Any of these are gonna be great, and all these have tone controls on them so you can sort of roll off some of the top end, make them sound a little bit more analog, or if you went with something like, say, a TC electronic flashback, it actually has several different delay types that you can dial in, whether that's a tape echo, whether that's an analog, or different variations of analog or digital delays just by way of moving where the controls are. These are all great choices if you're considering getting a delay, and that's certainly something that I recommend for beginners that are getting into pedals. You certainly need to have some sort of version of a delay, and getting something that's a digital delay I think is definitely gonna be the way to go. It's gonna sound great, you can emulate a lot of different tones, and there's not gonna be so many consequences or restrictions in terms of where you put it, either in front of the amp or in the effects loop. Now those are my top three picks, but some of us might have budget for a few more pedals. So I'm gonna extend this out to five total pedals but with those first three kind of being the core elements of what I would choose if you are considering getting into pedals and you want to start adding some strategically. But these are kind of the two extra credit or two bonus ones, depending on what your particular setup is, that I also think are important and are going to help fill out your entire rig so that you're able to get everything you need under one roof and have a great starting pedal board. The next effect is a reverb. Now the caveat to this is some amps do have reverb on board. However, in a lot of live contexts, even amps with reverb can be problematic. If you're next to a loud drummer, often the reverb tank inside of the actual amplifiers themselves will make a crashing sound because the vibration of the drumming will actually cause the reverb to splash. And that's not always great for getting the best tone. Having your reverb crashing through the PA or being picked up by the mic, it's not a great sound. It doesn't look good when you're playing live. So for that reason, I think that sometimes having a digital reverb can be a good way to go if you're not able to isolate the amp from the drummer properly, or if your amp just doesn't have reverb, these are great ways to go. Now I got a couple that I really like. The TC Electronic Hall of Fame is a great one. It's very affordable, has lots of different reverb types, whether that's spring, hall, plate. You can even program it up with their custom tone print package to make it whatever you want it to be. Equally, another great one that I really love that you can get pretty affordably is from Digitech, and it's the Polara. And it has the same sort of parameters that you might find on a TC Electronic, but it is a lexicon-based chip, which is the kind of the classic reverb sound for digital reverbs that were invented back in the 1980s and definitely has a lot of that vibe and again is quite affordable. But again, you may have this effect on your amp already and so you may not want to put any of your budget into a reverb if this is something that you already can duplicate with your amp. But again, consider how you're going to be using it. If you're just at home like I am here in my home studio, you may not need to worry about that. You can use the amp reverb no problem. 
but a lot of these reverbs, like the ones that I mentioned, are also compatible in the effects loop as well as in front of the amp. So it gives you some flexibility on where to put them and that you can utilize them with multiple different amplifier styles if you were to ever upgrade your amplifier or get something that has an effects loop. Now the last pedal I would say amongst our extra credit sort of pedals, if we're gonna take this out to five critical and essential pedals, I think for me is gonna be a compressor. And especially if you're still a new guitar player, compressors can be really valuable in that they help even out your dynamics. Even now, as somebody who's been playing guitar for a long time, I still feel like my right hand pick attack still sort of lacks the control that I want. And when I put on a compressor, it helps me even out all those differences between how it is that I'm picking. It makes all my volume levels really balanced out. So even if I hit a little bit harder, I'm not getting a big spike in dynamics. Now, sometimes more advanced players don't like using compressors for that reason because they want to have more control over how their picking dynamics might be based on how their right hand is moving. But for players like me and guys that like to have that bounce for every single note, a compressor can be a really great tool for that. And I like using it as an always on for my clean tone. I kind of think about it as like the overdrive sound for my cleans where it kind of fattens everything up, makes everything sound a little bit more balanced, but doesn't really have any distortion to it. So I really love having this in my signal path, especially for my cleans, makes everything really nice and even and gives me that kind of beautiful studio process tone, even though I may not be running through a really glorious mixing board or having all these great mic pre's, especially for live use, it can be a really valuable, useful tool, and I highly recommend that you check out a compressor. Now on my rig here, I have a Keeley 4-knob compressor, but there's plenty of great compressors out there. I really love the ones that MXR is making with the studio compressors. And if you're on a budget, I also think there's some great compressors that are made by Boss that I think many people would be very satisfied with. And it'll give them a lot of the very same controls that I have here on this higher end boutique Robert Keeley compressor. So I highly recommend that you check out a compressor as one of kind of the top five critical pieces of gear that you must have as a beginner or intermediate player. And you're just starting to fill out your pedal collection. So to summarize, what do we have? Up front, you got the wah. Absolutely need to have it, even though they can be overused and sometimes there's a temptation to do that, you gotta have a wah. Also, overdrive, going with something more mid-range bass like the Tube Screamer. Some people don't love those, but I'll tell you what, they're on a lot of classic recordings, way more than any other overdrive that I can think of in the history of guitar pedals, so certainly a must. Also, digital delay, it allows you to either kind of simulate an analog or a tape delay. You can use the tone control to kind of make it sound darker, but you also have the ability to make it brighter and pristine. A lot of these you can use in the effects loop and in front of the amp, where sometimes analog delays can be a little bit more limited in how they can work in an effects loop or in front of the amplifier. Equally, they can get quite dark, and there's not really a way to brighten them up the same way that there is with the digital delay. If you want to expand beyond that and kind of go extra credit and get a few extra pedals and expand this to five, you could add in a digital reverb. A lot of these will also work in the effects loop or in front of the amp. Many of them also have multiple different reverb settings. You can approximate a plate sound or a hall sound or a spring reverb sound. This can be especially useful if the spring reverb in your amp might be crashing or getting that kind of splash sound because it may be too close to a hard hitting drummer. This eliminates the need to have to use the onboard reverb of your amp. But if you are in a condition where you can use it, then you may not need to invest any extra money on the reverb and maybe put that into getting another overdrive pedal that might be different or maybe some other devices that I didn't mention in this top five listing of guitar pedal. Lastly, using a compressor. This is a great way to even out your clean tones. I kind of think about it as the overdrive for clean, where it kind of makes everything sound a little bit bigger, fatter, wider, but doesn't offer the distortion, just offers kind of that evenness, that great feel underneath your fingers. And for players like me that are not great picking technicians, it really makes me sound a lot better than I am, evens everything out, and can really be great for a beginning guitar player that's still kind of getting their sea legs with their dynamics 
helps kind of keep all that even and it makes that clean sound sound a little bit more produced and mastered especially in a live context where you may not be running through all this studio processing or these mic pre's and all the fancy stuff in the board this gives you a nice sound right on the pedal board that's going to work great and synergistically with your other pedals and really bring some life to that clean tone so those are my picks for the top pedals that you need to get absolute essentials for beginner and intermediate guitar players that are starting to build their rigs and starting to pick up a few pedals. Again, I will list all my recommendations for these types of pedals in the description. So if you're interested, you can check these out at a couple different price points. I'll list some low price points, mid price points, and high price points for each of these. And you can certainly check out all those and see which ones might be the best fit for you. And again, if you have any questions or have any additional recommendations beyond the five that I gave here, or maybe reasons why you might supersede any of the recommendations that I made, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you like what you saw today, I highly recommend that you like, you subscribe, and again, leave us a comment about your feedback on this video. That's all very much appreciated. And if you wanna support us, you can always go and check out our pedals and buy one of our pedals perhaps over on the Vertex FX website, www.vertexeffects.com, or you can buy any of our pedal board based materials like zip ties, pedal board platforms, our custom made instrument and patch cables over at therigdr.com. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella, a.k.a. The Rig Doctor. See you later.